Tell you, hey there, champs, and welcome to the show. Now, you guys asked for it. A lot of people wanted it. The screen comparison between the 4K XPS 15 and the Full HD XPS 15. Now, first of all, I've got a lot of videos on this new Cabby Lake XPS 15. I'll leave a link in the description with a playlist for all the videos, reviews. And also in that playlist, you'll find a video on how to upgrade your SSD and how to upgrade your RAM. And I've left the appropriate links for the SSDs you want for this XPS 15 and the RAM you want for this XPS 15. You don't want the wrong RAM and and you don't want a SATA base SSD. Now just talking about the SSD, some people have been getting units shipping with the Toshiba SSD rather than the Samsung one. Now the Toshiba SSD is a little bit faster than half the speed of the Samsung one. So it is a significant performance difference between the two. Now I've contacted Dell and I've asked them, is this Toshiba the SSD they're going to have going forward? And I've been told that this is a supply issue and they're having trouble getting some Samsung from vendors. Now, I've got to take that for what it's worth. Dell do not actually specify the speed or type of SSD you get in the new XPS 15. It is what it is and I'll just put up the speeds of the Toshiba drive here. So this may be one reason you want to upgrade your SSD. Maybe get the smaller SSD and then upgrade it to a fast one. That would be my recommendation now because at the moment you don't know if you're going to get the Samsung or the Toshiba. So anyway, let's get on to this screen comparison now first of all sunny day okay so i've got the window open this is the worst conditions for reflections you're never going to see these sort of conditions in indoor light but i thought why not torture test it give it the maximum amount of light in this room so in the real world when you're mostly using your laptop indoors you're not going to get the reflections as bad as what you see in this video so as i boot them both up this is a good chance to check the light bleed now you can see on the left is the 4K version and on the right is the Full HD version. You can see straight away because one looks glossy, one looks matte and I'll get onto the bezels later. But anyway, when the machines boot up, check for light bleed. Now, the Full HD does have a slight light bleed if you can pick that up or not, I don't know. But it's not bad and in real world I cannot see it. I can see it when it boots but... I cannot see it when I'm using the computer, so I'm not worried about it. There is no light bleed or very little light bleed on the 4K model. Remember, all LCD IPS type panels do have a certain amount of light bleed. It's just when it becomes unacceptable that, yeah, you want to return it. But once it's on, you can see straight away the pop of the 4K model compared to the Full HD. Now the Full HD is a fantastic display, don't get me wrong there, but you can noticeably see side by side it has more contrast to 4K, it pops more, it just does look better. On both of these, when I look at 1080p content, I can't tell the difference. There's not really any scaling issues with the 4K, although some apps are not updated for 4K yet with scaling, so you will run into some that have sort of weird scaling issues and just look soft compared to what it would do in Full HD. Now, I'll just show you the resolution difference between the two. So the Full HD is on 100% scale in there. I'll change this 4K model to 100% scaling so it shows you the true resolution of the 4K and you can see there's a massive difference in resolution there. Interestingly, this Full HD model has the 54 watt hour battery, the small battery I think it is, or 56 I think it is. And it gets pretty much the same amount of battery life as the 4K version with the big battery. That was very surprising to me. I wasn't expecting to get that much battery life out of the small one, but obviously the 1080p screen doesn't suck as much juice, so you get around the same amount of battery life with the small battery and the Full HD versus the 4K and the large battery. Now, if you have the large battery and the Full HD screen, you're going to get 10 hours there, 10 hours plus. Now, if you look closely, you can see the bezels on the Full HD, they're matte. And on the 4K model, you can't really see the bezels because the bezel's hidden under the glass. There's actually no lip to the bezel. The edge-to-edge -edge glass covers everything. So it covers the webcam, it covers the bezel, and everything is underneath the Gorilla Glass. Whereas the Full HD version, there's actually a matte bezel and it's plastic. The actual display glass is underneath that bezel, so there actually is an edge. There's actually a lip to the Full HD version. So they look aesthetically different. So there's nothing wrong with the matte one. I do actually like the matte look of the bezels and not having reflection when you look at the Full HD. But if you look at the 4K model, it just looks a bit more slicker. Like, like it's just finished a bit better because everything is hidden underneath that glass. So aesthetically, it does look slightly better in my opinion. I mean, that may differ to you, but now viewing angles well you're going to get reflections on the 4k model so you have that 
depending on your lighting situation this is a really extreme lighting condition in here but you do get better viewing angles on the 4k model you'd lose a bit of contrast after 45 degrees on the full hd model but with the matte screen you don't get so much reflection so sort of like viewing angles versus reflections whatever's more pleasing to you i guess now ghost in now let's have a look at the ufo test now this is all filmed at 60 frames per second so you should be able to see pretty much what i see now I've mentioned in real world I don't see any ghosting in both of them like I really don't the full HD does ghost a little bit more than that 4k model and if you're looking for it you will see it okay so if you see the UFO here and you can see the chasing squares you will see that there is ghosting but in real world I don't really see it and especially with the 4k I really have to look for it in the 4k to see it even with gaming so in real world I'd say the 4k you're gonna have to really look for the ghosting to see it and with the full HD the ghosting is a little bit worse if you're really looking for it you'll see it when you scroll through text and gaming you will see a little bit of trailing but generally speaking I don't really notice it when I know it's there I can see it if you know what I mean if that makes sense now we know that the 4k model is brilliant color accuracy and it has that full 100% Adobe RGB and on the full HD I measured a bit over 80% sRGB on the full HD display but the full HD display, when I calibrated it, the colors are very accurate. The calibration was very close to what you see out of the box. So you can really trust the colors, although you don't have that wide color gamut, you can still trust the colors on the full HD. So although I do recommend the 4K version, unless you need battery life or you're a gamer or stuff like that, just because in my personal opinion, I do like it better. There's nothing wrong with getting the full HD version and I would be happy with it if I had it. I wouldn't be complaining, but the only reason I get the 4K is, you know, just to that contrast, that pop it has, you know, and I video edit and I edit photos and I want that 100% Adobe RGB gamut there. But I think you will be happy if you get the full HD. Remember, these screens are not for gaming. So look, if you're really sensitive to ghosting and stuff, you might want to look at a gaming laptop. But all in all, in real world, I don't really see too much of an issue with ghosting and so on. And both of these screens are fantastic. When I scroll through text, I find that the text using Edge scrolls smoother and better than when I use Chrome. So for what it's worth, I'll use Edge. It just renders the text better. So anyway, I hope this helped you out, guys. I hope it helped you make a decision on what screen you want to use. I have a lot more XPS 15 content coming, so just stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe and definitely leave comments down there on things you want to see or what you think about your screen and your experiences. Let me know down there in the comments because, you know, a lot of people are helping each other. It's fantastic. So until next time, guys, tally ho.